Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in a mod I've yet to play called Falling Star. Uh, this mod takes place 66 million years ago during the late Cretaceous era. More importantly, it takes place in the decade before the asteroid landed that wiped out, or according to the Steam page, whipped out the dinosaurs. There are 15 countries with unique focus trees along with countless interesting paths, decisions, and fates for the world. Make out that surrounds a godless empire, which we are playing as, I believe, right? Yes, I did choose the Godless Empire for us. Um, the Republic of Bashtia, an artificial landmass in which sits the great city of Draganiapolis. So, it's created by a shaky, de-shaky, that one shaky guy. Very awesome person. But I've not talked to you actually in a long time, which I should, I, should, I should have talked to him. But anyways, a very long time ago. 66 million years ago, the world was dominated not by humans and large mammals as it is today, but by reptilian life. By the Dracorex. The Stegoceras. By the Tyrannosaurus. The Velociraptor. And most importantly... By two species, quite a bit more intelligent than these ancient birds, the moths and the dragons. Though, like our world, theirs too was far from perfect. 1,916 years after the founding of the long forgotten city of Ravaride, Ravari, the free nations of the southern stretch were defeated by a coalition of northern autocracies led by the imperial placelands. Bashi's capital, Dragoniopolis, fell in now. A godless empire born from the ashes of that conflict is shattered. A crown of the new threats rests in the north as foes from Cersaloth have the Romanica. And the northern Thaw shepherd in the claws, but Pashti, a shadow of his former self, still fights on. The beginning of the end unlocks major arc decisions. Time takes forever rapidly. If you want to have a more basic campaign experience, you can disable the asteroid in the game settings and get event Imperial Dragoniopolis. Also, I'm going to read pretty much all these events and focuses. Uh, Terentium Verden bursts through the doors of the Falaraya Palace, a legislative assembly formerly hosted an assembly of modernist governments during Bashtia's rule of the city now. It was some of the Imperial Parliament which met in this building on occasion. It was styled out of the Senate of the Imperial Place Lands, or Palace Lands. Though completely undemocratic, if the crazy citizens of Draganopolis, so incredibly washed by, brainwashed by Bashtia, were allowed to vote for any candidate they wanted, the city would be reduced to ruin and bureaucrats and Ravaride would be laughing. Haivis, though, for now, insists that Shirei continue and that eventually the dragons and moths of Dragoniopolis would change their minds. It is vital to the Empire that we pass the Imperial Reconstruction Decree and move division, divisions back into Deadwatch. I fail to understand why the RPRC and Haivis insist on continuing this broken deal with the Lordship League. Verdon shouted across the hall at Imperial Minister Laralis. Laralis? Laralis? You must allow for the second vote. She ignored him in Fularia. Security began moving in on Teratium Verdam. They continue to shout, I have proof that the Le Lordship League is dishonoring the military readiness and cooperation agreement. I have proof that General Linneth uh, plans on invading and taking control of the territories for himself. Laura Lees laughed loudly. She shouted towards Verdam. Oh, my dear Verdam. Her dragon filled with so much energy, a dragon of action, so very bold. She turned to her fellow parliament members, who all smiled at what Laralees had said, and I am so interested in what you have to say, but you must agree, my friends, to stop these public demonstrations. You know how the emperor feels about them. I will not be silenced. Unlocks the parliament decisions. Unlocks an option for Verdun to become executive of the parliament. Here's his imperial approval. Okay, let us talk. Oh, so what do we have here first? The Bastion Resistance, which looks very bad. Oh my god. We have Remains of the Coalition. Mm, not good. The Indium Blockade, interesting, not good either. The Library of Havies, no, okay. And the World's Core, uh, that's, uh, that's kind of, uh, uh, what do you have here? Service by requirement, okay. And what do you have here? Oh my god. The Emperor, approvals high, Parliament approvals low, total war decree. Oh, it's 1936 though, okay. Um, more organization, less stability, more war support, interesting. Oh, I kind of like this, when selected. Ooh, well, active. All sorts of interesting things here. Concessions of Parliament. Here's Parliament's approval of the country's course, current course of action. Concessions of the Emperor. Imperial Ascendancy. Full Imperial Power. Huh. Parliament Ascendancy. Low Parliament Approval. Oh boy. High Imperial Approval. Major arc selection. Choose your first major arc to unlock other decisions. Lux powerful decisions to buff your armies. Over time, lux powerful decisions to develop new resources. Precision factories? Uh, I'll be honest, I've never played this before, so I have no idea what this is like, so. Increase construction speed. Military investments. Gain XP and powerful general traits. Buff your armies, new resources. Well, precision factories, maybe? What is this? Intensive industrialization research studies and practices will allow our economy to triumph over all others. Retire Major Arc. 
Never be again available. However, if you earn the National Spirit or reward, you permanently keep it. Promote studies. Hmm. Renovate factories. Oh my god. Large industrial investments. There are Draconical gates. <coughs> there are an entrances or traces, probably entrances, to the ruined central Draconicum, which lies in a subterranean network under North Spire's watch in the E. Much of the central Draconicum and its ruler, the automated central intelligence, were destroyed by the Hyvee's Gilden Wing after taking control of the city of Draganopolis. Draganopolis, near the end of the war for the core. Interesting. Wow. We've got a lot to do. Um, but. I kind of looked at this just a little bit, not too much. Next, I can look Golden Age, the Bastion Resistance, which I do want to do. But also this. We have Chosen Messenger. Also, we're on A Historical as well. So, Soul of the Empire. Decreases Imperial approval, more, more Parliament approval. Focus on war and expanding the Empire. Peace and defense against Bastion. I kind of want to go to war. So. I, I, I definitely want a more war focus. So, a Godless Empire. Um, increases Imperial power. Many may worship Via, yet the Empire worships no god. Modernism will not save, soul, save or souls, our souls. The problems of the two societies is based on the fabricated information used to only better control the masses. The idea of a divine liberator is barely more than a joke. We promise to not play games or protect this world. So basically, to do that, we to go more focus on the war, we need more apartment approval, which is going to be kind of sucky because it's very low. Uh, it's imperial approval, which we don't want. They watch maneuvers. Who's Verdin? So who does we have this? Hades, he's charismatic. He's pacifist. Of course, here's sport attack, that's kinda nice. Bastion rebels, modernists, two societies, spire watch party. We're currently here. Cult of Hades. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe we chose the wrong one. Did watch maneuvers. Laurelise met with a Verdin in her office on the cramped second floor of the Ferraria Palace. Portraits of Havies and Rarorit line the walls. I have little reason to believe the military readiness and cooperation agreement is being violated, but if it is, I'd like to know. Laurelise whispered. Laurelise. A Verdin pulled a document out of a binder. Some of my friends within the so-called core constituencies were able to intercept this letter between Lord Oranilis and Lord Alnir. It implies that he thinks very little of the agreement and hints at them lowering taxes for the lords beyond what was allowed. I am also currently working to obtain budget records that are proved that they are underfunding nobles, undertaxing nobles, underreporting their budget to us, and underfunding the military. Laurelise looked at the letter. As is concerning, she glanced at Verdin and then looked around her office, staring at one of the portraits of Havens. You know, there's a way we could deal with this. We could send over a legion, take control of the Dead Watch, restore order, but he would not like that. Does he really care so much about peace for Via's sake? He's single beyond being single, being with the most blood on his claws. He does, he probably does not care at all about what's going on in the Dead Watch. Those other priorities not completely in line with the cause of the Empire. Are you suggesting no but I'm willing to send you to Dead Watch? We'll find a legion, see you as a civil war within the Lordship League. We'll deal with it with ourselves. No need to get Havies involved. I accept. In two months, Verdon will lead an invasion of the core constituencies. Oh, I guess we have a puppet here too. Imperial Vice Spire. Derbies. Political Mastermind. Wow. Also, there's a lot of nations with unique focus here. Also, like, if you want to see oh, Poe's AVs, the uh, oh, Civil War when it begins. Oh. Um, if you want to check out the mod for yourself, it'll be in the comments. First link in the comments section below. No, not comment section. Uh, the description. My bad. I can't think. Ah, we're over here. Oh, we have these guys too, huh? Forva, <clears throat> Modernist Rebels, Righteous Nation. Oh, I didn't even see. Do we have a navy? Oh, we do. Well, might as well train them. Train basically till you die. Alandar's Fall. Okay. It reminds me just a little bit like. Equestria War. Early stuff? I'm not going to use any early, early stuff if I can help myself. Um, we get 0.21. Well, that's not good. Uh, I do want to do this one. Um, so, we're doing this one as well. The Furvan and Bastion moderns who founded the city of Dragonopo Dragonopolis so a great power onto it. We need to get rid of ourselves of their influence. Vaxpire announces its ambitions. Following the breakdown of order in Alandar, 
Uh, the Imperial Protectorate of Vice Spire has announced that the demands of the city of Vice Spire to be returned. Both the Kingdom and the Technocracy have been adamantly refused with their request, so it appears that another player has entered the Island Dance of War. I should best of luck, Hades. Look at this. Emperor. Hades Gildenwing, a self-described passage that had 30 years ago escalated the third Dragonopolis crisis into the largest and most brutal war the world ever, has ever seen. Before he was a politician, voted out of office, cursing the name of his emperor, who had once pulled palace land forces into conflict. Now he's the emperor of the imperial palace lands. Call the godless empire after said palace lands themselves escaped his grasp. The RPRC is now at a critical juncture. Hades powers an all-time loan, so can forces within the party seek to replace him with a less pacifist, more reliable candidate. Hello. Oh, we're down here. Bro, that sucks. Also, here are the divisions that we have. Um, we have the veterans, which are only 32 combat with, which is pretty decent, which we will make quite a few guys later, but they do have tanks, which I don't like. Militia, which is just infantry, actually, which is okay. And these guys are basically the same thing, but instead of all nine, we have an uh, artillery piece here. And some of that golden raptor division, which I will try to use these guys as much as possible. If you're a mountaineer, not bad. So we're going to have a lot of arms like that. Ooh. 158, that's not bad. Okay, uh, what do we have here? Political power? Nice. Ooh, we get a partial mobilization. Can we get any more political power? Oh. So that work for us. Friends of Terror, pretty normal. 5% more political power is not much. I'm going to give that person even more. We want. We love the PP. This mod moves fast. God dang, son. <laughs> Drains well. We're definitely not going to have nearly enough guns. But we do want planes, too. Um, concessions of Parliament. I want to increase Parliament approval, probably. But I still want to do this stuff as well. Try to output a little bit. And then... Parliament. Ah, so this thing's actually over here. Empire strikes first. See no other option. Verdun has landed in East... Wyvoria, with a legion sanctioned by the Imperial Parliament, but not quite so much by Hades, killed him. The extent of this campaign is so uncertain, but it was ordered by a lower lease, and wanted to be seen as taking strong measures against the Lordship League. Verdun was a full tool for doing that, so a large legion. Oh, the core constituencies, huh? Minimal support. I'm gonna send a large legion, let's penalize ourselves. Civil War and Dead Watch. The violence between the Imperial Parliament and the Lordship League has reached a peak as a godless legion now landed in East Wyvoria. Operations being led by Tsartam, Tarantam, Burden, a prominent Imperial advisor. Hmm. Poor constituencies, huh? No. Yeah. Do they even need focus? Oh my god. It's not bad, do they have one? It's, uh, no, not really. Two societies. What if we don't get involved? Hmm. Parliament intervention. Yeah, I don't know. Let's see. Do we, do we, know, we know nothing little about either one of these two, huh? Uh, one division, huh? Well, you can only send them one. We'll send them a tank. Did they even check for planes? Oh, yeah, I did. Well, okay, they have no, no planes here, so. Moderus in Dragonopolis. A century ago, an idea was born. And the scene between Furaville and Wyvoria, the new city would be built upon land which had already been mostly reclaimed by the Furovans. A city served as a center of trade to further protect Furva and open the door of modern, modernism to the north. And now with that city in imperial hands, the ideals of modernism still fester. Houses and lines cross from cross the world are brought to Dragonopolis before the annexation, and the one thing that unites them is their hatred for the revivalist ideology. The Red Rebellion, an army of 100,000 strong, has been occupying the city for the past few decades, which even little success at rooting out resistance and now, a plot between the Bastians and Emerald Way, the former governors of the autonomous Blue Porta sector. And the Furovan rebels and Hustios has shattered the illusion of stability. It's only a matter of time. Until war breaks up between the Imperial Garrison and the Bastion rebels. Okay. <laughs> we tend to force Bastia out of the stronghold in the Emerald Way. Core martial laws. More stability, should they solve the core, we'll get a defense bonus against them. It's probably power. For the Dragonopolis Crisis. Ooh. 
We get more stability here, though. I like that one. The words of Hyvie's Guildwing have corrupted the heart of the city of Dragonopolis for too long. We must be replaced by someone more confident, less influenced by strange doctrines and hypocritical ideals. We have no political power, but what else can you? God is God. Um, the new economic age sounds nice. What else do we get down here? More resources. Finish the build up. Rare resource stockpile. Tungsten exchange. Resources for planes. Steel manufacturers. Steel takeover production. Steel company buyout. Civilian utopia. Initial priorities. Begin militarization. Balance construction efforts. Invest in refining. I was hoping we get another research slot down here, but I guess not. Military investments as well, which wouldn't be bad. The new way, armor technology. Um, what if the would be interesting? Into the skies. Versus focus on artillery. I like artillery. Ooh, artillery attack too. Hmm. Trial, final lesson in land doctrine. In air doctrine. Oh, there's a the research slot. That's pretty far away, though. Oh, God. Wait. I didn't even see it down here. We have... What the heck? Empress Dervis? Emperor Egenshard? Empress Revarvia? Imperial Weisbeier? Alliance? Weisbeier of War? Integrate the Old Empire? Reclaim the East? Kind of like that. That sounds like fun. Ooh, another research slot. Restore Imperial Honor, though. Cult of the Goddess. Ooh, that's a lot of political power. Destroys the Sun. Circle of the Eve. End the Blockade. The Empire Triumphant. Prepare the final army. Yeah, wow. A new godless navy. To the east. New dominions. Imperial Corps. If you can. Ooh, is that a unique one? That sounds like fun. I don't know. Uh, forge. Oh, so we don't even get down here. Okay. So this has a lot of different stuff here. The GDP. What the heck? Oh, well. Okay. God's Empire. After that one. I think I'll do this one. Get more stability. Well, we mitigate the crisis. Martial law must be instated with the, in the city of uh, Dragonopolis. It's hard to tell or call its current situation not martial law, but even so, increased efforts will be made to tame the populace and limit potential rebel activity. Hey, we made it. Time for some fun, right? Here, help take him out. We have no fuel. Okay, never mind. You take him out. Um, let's get one thing of fuel, maybe. And since we're here, army gets priority. Hope they're learning something. Pavilion is dead, huh? The part against heavies. The nature of war, of the war of the core and the gods, and perhaps attracted so many non so aligned with Havies past his virtues to the upper echelon of the Imperial ranks. And now with Havies being significantly popular in and out of his empire, it's time to strike. God's God. So now to begin the process of removing Hades from power. Despite his name and reputation, he has many enemies within the Empire, especially in the city of Dragonopolis itself. I'll take us a meeting between his foes, and you'll have no option to save uh, the fleet. Victory and Deadwatch, after a moderate sized conflict, Verdant's forces take control of the city of Deadwatch within the name of the God's Empire. The rebellion lords will shortly be dealt with, and all that needs now is to decide the fate of that territory. Godless. The God's Empire annexes the intervention force. Daily political power gaming, what's worse? Deadwatch and others, no longer the core of the current the Emperor, and the Dead of Night, the Emperor. Oh, Havy's Golden Wing. Did what he had to. He removed the traitor to his cause, visiting both Dead Watch and the Fer Ferraria Palace. The Gallus Empire is no place for warmongers. This, the members of the Imperial Parliament would be a wise remember. In his last breath, Tara Tiam Verdon cursed the name of the Emperor, tell him that he was a hypocrite. Havy's finished his job, I've only ever sought peace, no one should have to die fighting for an empire. Oh. But we expanded. Nice. So I guess this is approval, and this is a power. Welcome back. Hope you enjoyed your time over there. We're losing so much political power every day, it's not funny. 
Wow. Oh, look, that, that's just a diamond there. That's kind of cool. A bit of water roads, why not? Uh, after you know, yeah. my core lands m matter more than yours. Huh, we're down here too. Little island. This machine tools. It's first. Into Imperial. Oh, they're fighting too, huh? God's God. Well, if we saved, if we k killed the guy off faster, we should, probably would have been able to save him, but whatever. Um, borders abroad. The Great of the Empire stretches uh, far beyond our current borders, and Gildenwing has enemies all throughout the Imperial States. We must contact, contact his enemies for support as we need to. I'm prepared to act. The Three Dark Figures. Knights of uh, Hedro Hedromatica. I run to Coral, center of Dragonopolis, seeking an audience with the Emperor, Havis Godwin. Leader of the party, Yelady Yavir, third commander of the night, spoke of the harbinger of the Slilov, Darcia Martinus, a child of the palace lands who was like Havis, rejected by society and eventually found his way to the city of New Slilov. Surprisingly, the knight didn't ask for any sort of tribute or any oath of, of loyalty to Darcia. They claimed that he, in his own town, would subjugate all who saw who the gods saw fit for him to subjugate. They simply come to make a deal. Hedromantica, sought to retrieve important intelligence on information on Bashtia, the great enemy of the Empire. While it would be in Havi's interest to give them the intelligence for free, they have offered a small payment in return for their assistance to their deal. Hmm. That's a deal, why not? We could use the political power. We could totally use it. We're removing him. Maybe this was probably a good dragon before the last election preceding the third crisis. It could be maybe called the savior of the Flyhouse Lands. In a century of war from the Vivialand Viv Viv and reformed his country, however, for whatever reason, his action following that, that has been questionable past. And while some can still want to continue seeing the continuation of the Empire created, none want him to continue leading it. The years of peace. Maybe uh, cares. Claims to care most of all things about peace of the gears. Uh, palace peace seem to always turn on him. Now we will ensure his peace is, is unable to achieve. There's okay two ships. I'm not sure we really want to put some ships with such limited uh, weaponry. Better engineers, probably. Upon uh, defeating Bastia, Hyves began an initiative known as the Gears of Peace. Okay, yeah. Infiltrate the Ministry. The Imperial Ministries have been long been a partial Hyves, many of the same institutions being copies of the ones from the Bastian era of the city. They sort of, their support will not cost much. The new P RPRC, Hyves part of the RPRC, this is long before him, probably. Uh, didn't even agree with the course of action took during the war for the cores. Time to give a new coat of paint and establish a new leadership. Varanziger's War. Following the collapse of the Northern Coalition, Alexei Varanziger marched north to maintain order. He ever failed in his mission has now long led a military occupation of Mixerna against the forces of Hades. Seems that like he's war back in action and across their support. Side with him. Ooh. Hmm. Remember Dragons, Outlands Coalition, Ice Empire, Knightdom of Archeum. It's true, I'm like try now. Ah. You guys. Divine Liberation, Revivalists, Building a Nation, Defensive Stance. What is these guys? The Brewing Rebellion. Oh god. Integrate them. Interesting. Well, so with Binate. Ah, uh, you know what? We can sell with them. Why not? We can sell them a division or two. Uh, how many? Just one, two. Actually, like this time. No plains. Is it just what type of fields? Is it, is it desert, mountains, fields, or like what's going on? Do they have some planes here? Yeah, they have quite a few planes. Uh, I don't want to send two tank divisions, but I'm probably going to. Actually, honestly, just let this guy leave. I will trade the ministry. Up here to Lexi. Oh. The occupying general of Mextrua, Alexei Varonziger, is one of the most notable in the Empire publicly opposed Havies. While they still get along to some extent, it should be truly easy to bring him to our side. Supply is probably going to be an issue here, too. Um, oh, supply maybe not, if we're over here. 
Is anyone else here? Brawl right now. Uh, or promote you. Be offensive. A new RPRC? And one of the most daring move yet. The RPRC has officially distanced itself from the Empire, or Emperor, removing from its formal head of the party and replacing with a council of top level executives preparing for the group of is removing. Strangely, the Emperor is aware of what is happening, he has done nothing. He appears to have other plans. For instance, Empire, it's time to reach out to the potential allies against Havies from within the Imperial, Imperial ranks themselves. The problem will no doubt side against him, but a surprising blow will be the betrayal of his own generals and staff. Beautiful. Promote. Oh! We lose a lot of organization now. Uh, or in the southern stretch. If he has severely neglected the Imperial States within the southern stretch, any hope of unity is destroyed by his actions. We must make sure to prevent the Empire from further deterioration. There you go. Battle for Dragonsport. Oh. Their surprise attack. The Boshian forces have overwhelmed the garrison of Dragonsport. Oh, crap. What the heck? Uh, due to the new doms there was little we could have done and many in the Empire could still be lost prior to the attack, unfortunate. Oh wow. Friends of the Empire, Spire Watch, Center of Heavy Support. There's still a host of many who would see him, like to see him gone. Some of his great supporters have expressed their concern to the RPRC opposition operatives. Promote loyal generals. And it's surely the success of our coup. We must promote and concentrate power around those generals who oppose Hades. Should we be able to gather enough forces that would drive the Empire into a nasty civil conflict? In the south, despite the rise of the problem in power in recent years, many former territories of the Godless Empire see their agreements with the Havies personally, instead of with the Empire in general. The RPRC has now begun to uh, make an initiative to make sure that the Parliament and Coral Hall are recognized as the root of the Godless Empire, not Havies himself. It sucks not having political power, man. Supplies are going to get a little not good. Infiltrate his guard. We have been able to infiltrate the personal guard of Havies. Assassination would be on the table. A new emperor. See, except for the Havies would be removed as emperor of the Godless Empire. Everything goes as planned. There will be no war opposition is moved. The empire will be free. What are we missing? More infantry coming, of course. Tanks? No, we're actually okay on tanks. Look at his guard, new emperor. We could do that. No. Nationalized blue port. Uh, blue port's independence prove our economic position in the world. Yet now the security risk of an independent blue port is too great. So three six. There we go. There we go as well. Empress Party. Oh. That's kind of cool. You win there by yourself, maybe? Trucks. We definitely need more trucks, though. I wanted to be able to circle them. So I'll do them. A new Emperor. See the right on the wall. Havy's go to me and simply disappeared. So I'm concerned about exactly where he is, what he's doing, and if he's going to ever seek revenge on those who ousted him, but it's now up to the new RPRC to find a replacement for him. Oh, God. So... A war industrialist, political mastermind. Egan's hard. War industrialists, they're both war industrialists. <coughs> Revaria. If you can. You will die. Emperor the Vice Spire. Empire Triumphant. To the east. You get free cores here. I kind of want to do that one, but I want to see what this one's like. I like this one more, just because you get so much more political power, but I want to go with this one. After months of RPRC man maneuvering to push out the pacifist emperor, Havies Godomwing. Havies has disappeared, and a new empress has been declared. Revaria, one of the most prominent imperial advisors within the empire. She has confirmed that the empire will pursue a more aggressive foreign policy going forward, and that Havies is not a threat to her rule. The unexpected contender, former member of the parliament, Revaria, has secured power over the empire. He reign or her reign might truly bring greatness to the empire, though some doubt her ability to maintain power. Prepare the final push. Final army, actually. 
New Godless Navy to the east. That sounds like fun. Um, I'm going to take a slight break from that. And I'm going to go to the new economic age. Uh, the world recently declines, beginning to industrialize once again. With new options for trade and expansion, time and better economic mites. Oh. Yeah, that makes sense. Honestly, if you just drive up here, you'll have them. Where are our other tanks? Oh, you're right here. It's impossible to literally see you. Nice. There you go. Have fun. Look at that. Because I'm still building up more cities. <laughs> hey, Pagamu Pans, that's very good. Who's have a cup of coffee here, too? Oh. Oh, the sun. Where is that? Alandar is not having a good time right now. Also, here's a map. It's almost like North America, basically. Cuba, all them, Mexico, America, America's hat. Should really be part of America, but whatever. Nice. Ta-da! Old Gate Bridge, huh? Nice. Uh, civilian Utopia, finish the map. Oh, uh, this one. The power of the organization must be prioritized. If our economic output fails us, it will all be put in jeopardy. Yeah, pretty much. Look how fast they're moving. I love it. I love light tanks. Of course, the mod just moves very fast by itself anyways, but still. Yay! Good job. Talk to the Furva. Following the collapse of the Greater Empire, Furva and Vice Bar have remained loyal in return for economic and military aid. Furva has demanded increased payments in addition to what they already received. Hand it over. Ignore the request. You have a war support, which is not bad. Ignore it. New Gauss Navy? Navy's long neglected the Navy. Those had to be fixed. Without a Navy, Bastia will simply sit and blockade our ports forever. I have a 37, everybody. There we go. There you go as well. Nice. Oh, we need more stability for that one. Extra age, synthetics. Well, nationalized blue port, we're going to do next. We have to do that one next. Next planner. Prefer tactic. No, we don't have any unlock right now. Emerald Street March. We've gained until that Abashi is using the Emerald Navy. Oh, oh, Emerald Way sector of Dragonopolis and instigate resistance efforts and prepare for their, as they call it, inevitable return to the city. We must strike first and end this illegal activity. I think it's even Bosch to you. Spires watch desolate protocols. Oh, they're all the way down here. Holy crap. For the time, the chambers of the Draconium were, Draconicum were silent. For a time, they were peaceful. Now, though, something strange has been triggered. An alarm system built on the Draconicum. From nearly a century ago, has begun to fire very loudly throughout the halls. We're not sure what's going on, and we're worried about scaring a population of already on the edge, on edge month moths and dragons. We need to figure out what's going on. We'll do that one first, and then we'll come up here and promote industrial cities. Please feature Blueport. Following the war for the core, Blueport was kept as a sort of neutral zone within the godless empire's territory to ensure the trade could continue to flow. The free sectors of Blueport had its own government laws, which were independent from the empire's central authority, in essence. It was a separate country in exchange for autonomy. The free sector of Blueport paid taxes and allowed Imperial ships to control their harbor. However, two years ago, that arrangement had to be scrapped as Bashi began to uh, blockading access to the sea. And all ships sailing near Blueport and all operations within Blueport were under Imperial control. In addition, the rumors of a movement to spread the Blueport autonomy throughout the entire city made the nervous, Parliament nervous. The entire idea of autonomous regions within the Empire had to be scrapped for good. Now the Empire has had to move to take further action and seizing control of civilian dockyards facilities and nationalizing the remaining remnants of the business within the sector. Um, the only exceptions are a small handful of private businesses with ties to the Imperial Navy or the Emperor. The only question left is who will be put in charge of the port? Imperial control? 
Parliament control. Parliament, of course. Radio. Bruce, count it down. Parliament ascendancy is selected. Um, all right, so middle, not bad. When selected, this is Parliament approval of the country's course. Higher approval is not bad. You get two military factories, centralized authority. Here's the Parliament approval. We still want a good approval, though, right? While active, you get a lot of political power. Decentralized. It decreases imperial approval. Oh, it decreases the parliament's approval. Um, political power. We can do both. Get more political power. Why not? Oh, it's only 90 days. That's not very much at all. But, like I said, we're going to come down here and do this one. 10%. Mastery progress is not very high. But whatever. Waiting for that for now. Make some convoys, maybe. Some oil. Bastion commits to Emerald Way. Recently become aware of a Bastion scheme to use Emerald Way, a large sector of the Dragonopolis outside of Blueport, as a staging ground for rebellions within the city. What seems that this plan will never be realized. It highlights the fact that the Empire cannot afford to ignore any part of its territory if it expects to remain stable. Imperial troops began to implement increased security within the region, as it appears Bastia quickly realized what's going on. And unfortunately, it appears that they're doubling down on their plans to take control of the city, although retreating from Emerald Way for now. A partial success, but we need to plan on defending an against an imminent Bastion invasion. Forever has control assist Feronia. The situation of Feronia has always been questionable. Fervens have control of the laws and the governance of the region, yet still remains officially part of the Empire's core territories. Forever has announced its plan to officially purchase the region from us. It's a deal. Something I almost never choose, but I figured, yeah, why not? It'd be a little different, right? For the Dragonopolis Crisis. The third Dragonopolis Crisis birthed the Empire, and the fourth seeks to undermine it. We must not follow the same fate as Bastia. The Empire and the Parliament's might will be ensured. The Empire will survive. It has to. Sessions to the Emperor. As long as it's neutral, that's all I care about. I love how fast this is. Concessions. No see for about that, and then we'll do it f prepare the final army. A final army must be gathered to finish off modernist enemies once for all. Every moth and dragon must serve to ensure perpetual peace. Ah, oh, corruption is gone. Bosch has demanded the liberation of the East Fervia. Eastern Fervia in return for a ceasefire. You are able to concede at any time, but it is Bastia who ought to prove an advantage. As long as you keep control of the key territories and manage to field a larger army, Bastia will continue to suffer negative consequences. However, if they gain the upper hand, you will suffer negative effects until you concede. Something is sometimes a better group and fight another day. The new crisis. Uh, it appears Bosch has finally decided to execute its invasion of the city. Dragon and Moth soldiers flying the modernist banner Remnetrex landed in Hostios this morning began to quickly take control of the west of Ivorbia. Oh god. And meanwhile, Governor Crater has now officially seized control of port of, a port of Blueport, against the orders, of course. She dismissed the envoy sent to notify her that seizing the port were treasonous. Elsewhere, a large force of fervent and rebels constituting an underground criminal system within the Dragonopolis have begun taking control of local police stations and fortifications. The situation is much worse than we expected. We believe that she intends to use the situation as a pretext to seize power all over all of Dragonopolis. The leader of the fervent rebels, however, has expressed willingness to negotiate the original 1921 constitution, replace the new imperial one, and increase power to be given to Parliament. If we deny, we will have to engage in military actions to occupy the city. I just want war. Add godless constitution. The flame turn hot. All rebels must perish. A flame turn hot. Free city of dragging out this. Where's this one? Um, 
West is right there. Negotiate with the Separatists. Oh, they just go to war with us. Obviously, that would be pretty good. Hmm. A flame turned hot. So, what does that look like? The Republic of Bashi and the Empire had a mutual understanding that ensured peace after the fall of Bashi's capital city. It seems though that Bashi never truly saw the spirit as a time of peace. They spent every second preparing to wage war against us once again. Dragonopolis fortifications. The city of Dragonopolis proper must be defended at all costs and ensure the Bastions don't dominate the city. Should they secure the forts, it may take years for us to take the city back. Yeah, that'd be really bad. Leave the tanks here. You guys can come over here. Uh, I want to do large investment in dust stuff, but uh, we need artillery. What do we want to do? I don't know which way we want to go. Infantry? We have a lot of infantry. Armor would be nice, though. Hmm. We just got to get some daily army XP at the very least. And he's also plus 0 0.09. We could focus on tanks. We probably could, honestly. We could try it. Motorized mechanized. Start working on that. Oh, the crest continues. Hmm. Oh, we go to war with them, too. Well, we did that one, the Fourth Dragonopolis Crisis. Well, it got, oh, this empire has not gone out of the way to dishonor. And so, with the declaration of the Fourth Dragonopolis Crisis, it's obvious to everyone that the events took place in Dragonopolis. Oh, well, yesterday continues the beginning of yet another disturbance that rocked the city. A former governor of the city sector of Blueport retook control of the port, and Fervin's rebels seized control of the outposts throughout the city, declaring the creation of a new free city, free city of Dragonopolis. Bosch has also entered the playing field, landing divisions off the coast of Hostios. Rebellion will be crushed. That's a must. Ah, Bashi's over there. Crap. Okay, I didn't realize that. My bad. Can we be, like, quickly move over here? Potentially? Actually, I, you know, it's my first time doing this ever, so like, so we'll see, maybe, maybe not, come on. We must get back to the core hall. We're at war, can't even do that, darn it. Prepare the final army, of course, defense bonus. Prepare the final army, and Dragonopolis city fortifications. The city of Dragonopolis, proper, must be defended at all costs, ensure the Bastions don't dominate the city. Should the secure the forts, may take years for us to take it back. I got it, yay. How dare you, scum. That's all they are, straight up scum, Panzer Expert. Go and take them out. How many divisions they got? One and two, okay, interesting. Flare authority, huh? Oh crap. Retreat. All right, so at this point, you guys are doing that. Um, prepare. I don't know those capital ships. Use a destroyer, maybe even a light cruiser, or whatever, but not the capital ships. Anything but the capital ships. Anything else there? Armor trains. Don't really need armor trains, in all honesty. 38 mediums. Some more armor, I suppose. Find them and kill them all. Nice. It's going alright for us so far. Hey, more divisions deploy too. Look at that. I forgot to convert you guys to. God dang it. That's a lot of divisions. Nine, that's quite a bit. Uh, resource extraction because we can. And we're up to here. Hey, war economy, nice. 
Urban Defensive. The Empire was born on Urban Warfare, yet Urban Warfare can only be called a speciality of the modern legions. We must begin a new temporary program to boast our abilities to the Inferva and the Core. Oh, look at all those divisions dying. Beautiful. Oh, crap. Not beautiful. Now we got a race over here, so we don't die over here, too. So, um, I was like, why are they not deploying? Go, go, go. Can't build? Okay, whatever. We don't really care right now. And we need more planes. So far, not bad. Emperor approval. Approval is very high. That's actually really good. Well. End of crisis. Our work is paid off before the Dragoniopolis crisis is over. The Empire still stands. We must prepare for war with Bastia. Full into a war, real crisis. I enjoyed that. We lost a couple ships here and there, but whatever. Uh oh. Gotta put them down, huh? Oh, we're just building up a lot of stuff here, huh? I say no to your independence. Look at that. More political power, recruitable population, stability, construction speed. Beautiful. To the east, huh? Well, overall, not bad. Uh, resources. We're okay, resources. Uh, military investments? Strong defense needed to ensure that countries or nations continue to survive. We must focus on research and military expansion. It's almost 38, so we'll come over here. Verbal request control of Irvin. Upon its establishment, Ur Furbo was not granted a large port or any form of dockyard complex within which warships could be constructed. Furbo contacted us uh, in requesting the official control of Urban. Uh, Urban. Uh, to further ability to assist us in the complex to come. Oh, it's right there. Deal. It's too far. No. Well then, interesting. Well, at this point, I'm not sure what's really going to happen. The Bashan resistance is way better. We actually get one and a half physical power every single day, which is pretty decent. Final army, get more population. Final navy. This expires eventually, right? No, it doesn't. Oh, that's nice. Core world as well. Military investments. Um, after that, I guess we just feel more manpower and to go to war with these guys. I don't want to do this side. I want to do the other side, just because it gets it's more difficult. So we'll see. After this one, uh, I'm not really sure which way we want to go. I think I'm focused. Maybe I want to go to more warfare. That sounds like fun. I want to kind of maybe go more warfare for this one. Focus on artillery would be nice, but I might just go with a lot of focus on planes as well. Mobile warfare and planes. A new way. Motorized and mechanized force will be inevitably beat the out regular dragon and moth warriors. We must look forward and prepare for this. Armor tactics. Outdated infantry maneuvers will be sidelined and placed in new armor pushes. Advanced armor research. Our research into armor technology must continuously develop new brands and methods. Uh -huh. I'm going to get some of that too. A new industrial age. As the time changes, so do the resources required to build a strong nation. Moving forward, we'll have to redevelop a new extraction resource fabrication methods. Fueling the revolution. Modern weapons of war require large amounts of fuel, whether natural or synthetic. We must provide. Let the oil flow. We must take advantage of scattered oil reserves and prepare ourselves for what's common military facility buildup. New military facilities must be constructed to take advantage of synthetic production. But hey, if you enjoyed the first episode of us playing as God of Sunpire, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow. I'll see you what else we can do with this nation in the Falling Star mod for Hoi 4. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.